Hey guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and same here with Miss Lily. She came to say hello. I know people are disappointed she wasn't in my last video, but she's gone now. I'm here today with a really exciting reading vlog, and that is to be reading the top 10 books according to the Goodreads Choice Awards for the category of romance. I know I said I wasn't going to do this, but I will get to why I'm doing this after I thank today's sponsor for today's video, and that is Anna Luisa Jewelry. I've worked with Annalisa in the past and I'm so excited that they asked to work with them again because I love their jewelry. I got all necklaces last time and this time I got some really, really fun earrings and I am so in love with them. Anna Luisa is a sustainable company and they make sure to lower their carbon emissions. They have such high quality jewelry. It's long lasting. It's very affordable. Pieces start at $39. I think they make the best Christmas presents. I am definitely going to get something for my sister for Christmas. Just as a little uh, thank you for being an amazing sister. They are carbon neutral, so they do offset 100% of their carbon emissions, starting with the sourcing of raw materials all the way to the disposal of their pieces. They are a sustainable company and make sure that is one of their prime important parts of their company. So I am very excited to work with them again. I did get these earrings. If you can tell, there's a star on on one side and a moon on the other and they're little dangly things and I love them so much. I'm so bad at changing on my earrings and so I'm really excited to have these that are really pretty little dangles so that I remember to change them out because I wear the same earrings like three months in a row and don't change things out and I really need to because I love having really fun earrings and so I'm excited to wear these. I have two other pairs of earrings I'm excited to show you. So the first pair is this one. They're all dangly and they all have kind of like star theme going on because I love that so so much and so the next pair is this dangle with a star. I will show you up close. Ignore my nails as always. So this is the the dangle here. I'm trying to show you up close. So that is what it looks like and it just like dangles like that and I love them. The little hoops are not too annoying for me. I like how they are little. I feel like they won't get caught in things because I always like put my hair behind my head when I'm like teaching or working. So I really like that they're little small dangles. These next ones are absolutely stunning as well. I really love them. These are two stars and I love how these are. And again, they're just like the smaller dangle and they have um, the like four pointed star and they're so pretty. I really love my earrings. I think they're just a cute way to accessorize when I don't feel like putting on a lot of jewelry. Putting on some earrings definitely spruces up an outfit. I love that they're stars. I love that they're just simple yet fun and I feel like I'm dressing up a little bit even though not really because they're just wearing earrings on my ears. But I definitely recommend checking out Annalisa. I do have a link down below for you to use. They're having a huge sale for Black Friday and for the holidays so make sure you check them out and buy a loved one some very nice for the holiday season. I know I've already started Christmas shopping so I think it's great to get Christmas shopping done a little early and shop from companies other than Amazon. So try to make your gift buying a little different this year. I love finding different companies to support to surprise my loved ones with and so I really love Ana Luisa and I'm super excited to have these. So check them out. Link down below. Check out their sales. And I do want to thank them for sponsoring this video and I will go ahead and now get to the content. So I'm here today to talk to you about the Goodreads Top 10 Romances of 2020. They had their list of 15, they had 5 write-ins, and now it's the list of 10. So these are the semi-final rounds. Whoever wins this next round wins it all. So I did my reaction video, I'll link that down below to the original 15, not really impressed. And I was not surprised at all when we got the final 10. I think every single one of these was already on the original 15 list. None of the write-ins got made it to the end. No mass markets, no historical romances, and no indie publish. Sorry, Lily's getting excited. And it's fine. That's what it is. I said I wasn't going to do this video, but I've read all but two. So I decided I had to read these two because they're the two that I don't think are romances. And one of these people kept on telling me in my comments that it is a romance and other people said it wasn't a romance. So we'll get to that. I'm going to go through them and what I gave them and then we'll get to the two I haven't read. The first one is Beach Read. I gave this five stars. It's definitely a romance in my opinion. People think it's not. Two writers fall in love. It's really good. Then the Happy Ever After playlist by Abby Jimenez. I gave this like four and a half five stars. Super cute. Girl loses her fiance or husband in the very beginning so it does deal with grief. This one deals with grief as well and she finds a lost puppy and takes it home and it ends up belonging to Josh who was a musician who was on tour during that time and they start texting. It's really cute. I really love this. Then we have Regretting You by Colleen Hoover. I don't even remember what I gave this. I think I gave it four. 
I don't remember, but it is a about a mother and a daughter. I don't know if I would technically really consider this like super romance heavy. Both the mom and the daughter do have romances. This deals with grief as well from the beginning of the book and both of them have different relationships and it explores like their relationship together as well. Then from Blood and Ash, I gave this five out of five stars. One of my favorites of the year, fantasy romance. If you watch me, you know I talk about this all the time. And another one I absolutely loved is Take a Hint to Annie Brown by Talia Hibbert. I just thought about five stars, one of my favorite books of the year as well. Super adorable workplace fake dating romance, like they work in the same building and they have to fake date. And it's glorious and amazing and I love it. Then we have The Switch, which I do not at all consider a romance. I read this, I listened to the audio by Beth O'Leary. It is about a woman and her grandmother switching lives and just like filling in for each other's lives, but like making something more of it than what the other person was doing in their life. And so I gave this four to five stars. I really enjoyed it, but not a romance. Both of them like have relationships, but it's not romance heavy whatsoever. It's definitely about their own lives and learning more about themselves. So this shouldn't be on this list. And because it shouldn't be on this list, I'm actually not going to put it in my final ranking. I'm going to like put it to the side as not a romance. So it doesn't go into my ranking from best to worst. It's going to go not a romance. Then we have Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. I give this three stars. It is fake dating and it is MM and I just wasn't a fan of the main characters. They were really hard to like for me and it went on really long and it kept going back and forth and back and forth between if they liked each other or not and I was getting annoyed. So I give this three stars. It was fine and not my favorite. And then we had You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria and I didn't love this. I think I gave it two stars, maybe two and a half. It is about a soap opera actor falling in love with her co-star, but they both really didn't want the limelight. And I was like, why are you trying so hard in your careers to be like actors if you don't want people to know you? It just felt really weird to me and I didn't really care about the soap opera parts of the chapters. I got really bored with those. I wasn't a fan of this book really at all. I was so bored in the whole thing and I really didn't like it. So I gave it two and a half stars. Sorry. So based on those ratings, you can probably tell where all these fall, but I'm going to rank them when I'm done reading all 10. And now I actually started. The two I have not read is One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. This one I don't think is a romance. She is plus size and she goes on the show like The Bachelor and she is like The Bachelorette. And it's 400 pages, which I did not know. I want to read this like in two days because I want this video to go up on Monday. And it's Friday today, so I want to read this over the weekend. I'm pretty sure I can do it. I'm a little busy because Ohio State plays tomorrow, which I'm super excited for, but that always takes up a large part of my day. And then I have my live show tomorrow night on Carrie's channel for The Viscount Who Loved Me, the Julia Quinn book, book two that we're reading. So I have a busy weekend, but I plan on reading this. I don't know if it's a romance. I know she, like, dates guys, but is it centered around the romance or is that a side plot and she's more discovering herself and her relationship with her body? I don't know. So I'm interested to read this and see what happens. Then we have the most controversial on this list, In Five Years by Rebecca Searle. This one, I'm actually listening to on audio. I started it today and I have two hours left. So I listened to my audio on three times speed and this one's fine. Like sometimes I have to slow historicals down because of the accents, but I'm fine listening to this in three times speed. I listened to it to and from school. So that's over an hour of listening. And then I got home and walked my dogs, which is another 30 minutes of listening. It's only a six and a half hour audiobook, So it's very short. And this one started off where our main character is a lawyer. She's engaged. And then she has a dream of in five years, she's wakes up in bed with a different man with an engagement ring on her finger and the TV says like November whatever five years is from that date and she's like freaked out about it and she's like where am I what is this they have insane chemistry and insane connection and then she wakes up and she's back in her normal life she's like well that was weird and then goes on with her life four and a half years pass and then she meets that guy as the boyfriend of her best friend so there are some triggers in here, definitely loss of a loved one and a lot of talk of cancer, so be aware of that. I'm not going to tell you who those are affecting, I don't want to spoil anything, but that those are both discussed a lot in here, so make sure that you know going in. And I was, in the beginning, I was like, oh, I can see this being a romance if she's like super into her best friend's boyfriend, and it's kind of like Something Borrowed, which is like one of my favorite movies of all time. And I know people could say like that's not a romance, but I think that is a romance. Like her entire thing is that she loves Dex and her best friend's like engaged to him and they are secretly seeing each other then behind her back. It's super awful. Cheating's awful, but it was so good. So this one, I was like, maybe it's going to take the route of like something borrowed. No, there's no romance in here. And I have two hours left. Like she is not even like considering being with her best friend's boyfriend and... 
I don't know like she's freaked out about it and she's like trying to overcompensate with her relationship like oh let's get married let's do this and this and she's happy where she is but she's still kind of freaked out that she had a dream about this guy and doesn't know if he's good enough for her best friend and stuff like that so there's no romance <laughs> at all like I have two hours left and there's literally zero romance so this book I can tell you now is going to go on the not a romance not going to be in the category list so I am not going to put this in the ranking I'm loving it. I'm flying through it. I'm really intrigued by the characters, really intrigued by everything about this book. I really love it and I am enjoying it. I'm probably going to give it five stars. Like it's such a good book, but it's definitely fiction. It's definitely about our main character reevaluating her life. She's a super dedicated lawyer. Does she spend too much time being a lawyer? Is she really happy in her relationship? Is she happy where her life is going? Is she happy with her relationships in general? And so there's not a romance in here, but it's good. So that's why I can rate it, but I'm not going to put it in this list. And then starting tomorrow, I'm going to read this and we'll see how it goes. I've already rambled too much. So make sure you check out Annie with Louisa. Make sure you check out Hello Lovely because I'm wearing one of their sweatshirts because I live in their sweatshirts. Use my code PEACE15 down below if you want some Hello Lovely books. It's a skeleton with books and she does have a bun like I do. And then it says bury me next to my TBR on the back. I always have to put in my little Hello Lovely plugs in my videos because I love them so much. Like, literally, I buy things from them all the time. I bought my last sweatshirt I wore by them because I love them. So, check them out. Okay, I'll catch up with you guys later. Hi, Miss Lily. We're just cutting. We're just hanging out. Yes, are you going to kick me? Yes, silly. <laughs> so hey, guys. So, I finish in five years, and if this was at all considered a romance before the ending the ending shows this is not a romance whatsoever whatsoever i've already heard there's no happily ever after or hea there is not and i as a romance reader absolutely hated that ending but since it's not a romance i actually really liked the ending i feel like it was super realistic not everything was tied up in a nice neat little bow and i enjoyed it i'm giving this book four stars more like a four and a half but a four it was really fun not really <laughs> it was actually sad it dealt with Danny's life and how she just has to reevaluate what she wants. Is she doing what she wants to be doing? Is she getting fulfillment out of life? Is this the relationship she wants? It deals with her friendships, her familial relationships, her boyfriend. So it was really good and really sad, but good. Um, I don't know if I already said, but there's definitely content warning for loss of a loved one. She loses her brother before the book when she's really young and she still talks about how that's affecting her and also discussion of cancer is in a lot of here so make sure you're aware of that but i'm not going to be putting this in the list because it is not at all a romance whatsoever at all um uh, there's no romance in here like sure she's in a relationship and she has that like dream but that's not at all what this book is about. So I enjoyed it, but I'm not putting it in my list for the, the top 10 of 2020 for Goodreads. It's not even going to be ranked because it doesn't count because it's not a romance. Now I'm going to be starting uh, one to watch, which I'm very intrigued by. We'll see if it's actually romance. And I'll determine once and for all if it is myself. I'll be reading it because people said on that video I did that I couldn't judge the books if I haven't read them yet. So these top 10 I'm reading and then I'm going to judge them. So... That's all I have. I will talk to you guys probably tomorrow when I've read some more of One to Watch. Hi everybody. So this vlog is being cut a little short, which I did not anticipate because I'm DNFing this book. So first of all, you like my Christmas decorations in the background. I love it. I just got back from my parents' house. I always go over to watch the house state game. I know we are all not going around people. I only go to my parents' house and see my parents. So they are part of like my inner circle of people, it's literally my sister and my parents, and then we're the only ones who see each other. So I went over there and I'm spending Thanksgiving week at their house. It's just the four of us for Thanksgiving. So we are all in each other's bubble. And wow, I was reading this on and off throughout the day and i am 150 pages in hopefully none of the dogs jump on the couch because i'm currently balancing my camera on tissue box on the couch is lily gonna get up there no okay she's fine um it's bad so i know people love this and you have to take what i say with a grain of salt because i'm not plus size i've never been plus size i 
do you understand what it's like to be self-conscious about your body? There's no way I am at all confident with my body. I don't like, I never wear bikinis. I feel uncomfortable in bathing suits. I don't like tight clothes. I don't like showing off my body. So I get it from that aspect, but I have never been a plus size person. I do know a lot of people on Goodreads have given this book five stars and they have given it five stars because of the representation of um, the plus size main character. And so uh, going in, I thought this was going to be body positive. She is a plus size social media influencer. She's a fashion blogger. She gets mad about the show for not casting a diverse cast of characters, specifically with the body type, which is totally true on The Bachelor. I used to watch The Bachelor. I started with Deanna's season and I went all the way through whoever was with Colton was on their show. And as soon as Colton became The Bachelor, I was like, I'm done with the show. I tried watching Claire's season this year. I made it through her leaving and I was like, I can't do it anymore. I'm just, I am not a fan of the Bachelor franchise anymore. I can't. So I don't watch anymore, but I've watched for a very long time. So I'm very familiar with The Bachelor. They don't have any diversity whatsoever. I mean, they have their second black bachelorette and they're about to have their first black bachelor. So um, no diversity in culture and race and zero diversity in body type. Like every guy on, on Claire's season had a six pack. So she's like, I want to be diverse. And so they're like, Hey, why don't you be our bachelorette? And she's like, sure. This is not body positive at all. And it very well might be, but Bia, I thought was going to be like Ashley Graham. I follow Ashley Graham. I love Ashley Graham. She's so body positive. She flaunts her body. She's so comfortable with it. She shows it all the time. Sorry, Darcy's now slipping the camera. And she wants other people to feel comfortable too. Know that beauty is in all sizes. And she was on the cover of Sports Illustrated in a bikini. Like she is all about body positivity. And so I thought, Bia was gonna be that confident and she's not. We had a scene where she was supposed to go on a hot tub date and she wanted to refuse to wear a bathing suit. And they're like, well, you show yourself in a bathing suit on your blog. She's like, yeah, I control those photos. I can't control it on the camera. And so I kind of understand that. And that's totally realistic. Bia is so realistic as a someone who is uncomfortable with how society sees her. So realistic. And I know a lot of people connect with that. But to me, this book was marketed as someone who is potty positive, plus size, confident in herself. And she's going to go show America and the world that this show should have people like her on it. And I'm also what was really, really annoyed with the fact that her contestants were not told that she was a bachelorette. So you do have someone walk off in the beginning. I'm gonna get a little spoilery here. So I'll go ahead and put spoilers on, on the side, on the bottom. So we have someone walk off and apparently it was staged. Like the producer like told him to do that. But we have so many guys who call her a whale. They say nasty things to her. At one point, one guy was like, oh yeah, I knew of you before because one of my clients showed me what she used to look like and she said she used to be your size. I'd love to help you. And he's like, well, you're not happy with how you are, right? Like I'm gonna help you get thinner and she sends them home right away But then these guys are like calling her these names behind your back and they're still there And then she's like, oh, I overheard them talking about what it's like to like be intimate with someone who's plus size This other guy said he loved to date someone like me to get lost in the size of me and I'm just like this is not nice whatsoever. Oh my gosh. Everybody's cruel. There are trolls are showing on the internet and people saying disgusting things about her. And I'm like, where's the body positivity? Like you're showing the reality of our world we live in today. Sure, there's trolls everywhere that say nasty things like that about people who are plus size. But I thought this was supposed to be promoting body positivity, but it's really reflecting the very disgusting parts of our society. And that's not what I would have marketed this book as. Also, Going off of that, I really hated the format of this. There are so many, it's multimedia. There's so many blog posts and article posts and texts and emails and contracts and I don't like that. I feel like it's really taking me out of the story and that was a lot of the beginning. I don't know how much more we get, but like I don't like it how that's taking us so much out of it. It's definitely a choice of the author. I don't like that style of how this book is structured. And I did watch Beautifully Bookish Bethany's review of this a while ago, like when she posted it because she hated it. And I completely agree with so much that she says so far from what I I've read that I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna be in the camp of Bethany. I'm gonna hate the rest of this book. So I'm DNFing it after 150 pages. I just can't move on. And so I posted on Instagram and a few people have told me like it gets worse. I hated how she had, it's not a romance either. 
at all in my opinion 150 pages in absolutely zero romance no romantic connection with anybody in this book she's hung up over this guy she's known for 10 years that she slept with once while he was engaged so there is cheating and she is still kind of hung up on him thinks that no one could ever love her and she's on the show and she even said like I'm not gonna get engaged at the end like I'm not gonna fall in love on this show so she's already like adamant that she's not gonna fall in love there's absolutely zero connection with her and any of the guys someone told me who she ends up with because I asked them to tell me because I'm not gonna finish this and I'm just like well that's annoying and how the one contestant is large the rest of them all are like model six-pack abs which is also very annoying to me and annoying to her too a lot of these choices are for a reason and I don't like the, the the direction this author decided to go with the message she's sending with the guy that is plus size as well their conversation is about food which is annoying to me. I'm like, okay, they're plus size. It doesn't mean they're obsessed with food. That's really annoying. And the guy she likes the best is, of course, like the model, gorgeous, Adonis type of man. And I'm just like, this is annoying. And they also showed like her grocery delivery, and it was like 10 bags of Cheetos, 10 skinny girl chocolate bars. And I'm just like, why are we like perpetuating the stereotype that? plus size people don't eat healthy. And she did say like she loves to go to the farmer's market and like get all that kind of stuff, like fresh organic produce, but not based off of that Kroger list they, not Kroger, but like the grocery list they showed of her getting and I really didn't like that either. And so nothing about this book I like, there's no romance and I know there's, she's gonna end up with someone, but like there's no romance so far. It goes on for 400 pages, this is over 400 pages long. And I don't think I'm the right audience for this and I'm getting mad. And someone even told me on Instagram, they're like, yeah, I read this in love it but you're not gonna like it it's not a romance there's no romance in here if she ends up with someone cool but I do think all of the guy characters fall really flat I can't even tell you the difference between them now and so someone said oh well she ends up with this guy and I was like was that this guy because I can't remember who this guy was and what Bethany had said like their races were just thrown in the beginning as like oh here's the Asian here's the black guy here's this guy and then you're like wait was he that guy I don't even remember they don't even describe them again and what they look like and you're supposed to remember from the first meeting of what they look like and I'm just very confused and I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like anything about it. I'm definitely the wrong audience for this, honestly, because I am annoyed that it was marketed as something being super body positive and she's so confident and she's gonna find a man and she wants to find a man. She doesn't wanna go on the show. She's super jaded about the show. She's, I don't even know why she went on there just to promote uh, being diverse with your body types on the show, I guess. She didn't wanna fall in love, hi. I know. So it's not my cup of tea at all and I'm gonna DNF it. I'm getting angry and I know based on Bethany's review I'm just gonna get angrier because things that she pointed out haven't even happened yet and it's just gonna make me mad. So unfortunately I'm gonna DNF this and this is gonna go on the side of not counting whatsoever. So let me go grab my list so I can finally compile this list. The two I read for this video don't even go on the list so we love that. Not counting is um, in five years. This is not on the list. It is not a romance. Also not a romance is one to watch. Not a romance, even if it was on the list, it'd go at the very bottom because I gave it zero stars. I'm not grading it, I'm DNFing it. Um, so it goes at the bottom of this list, not a romance either. I'm also putting the switch as not on this list. So the switch is not a romance as well. This is probably the least romancy after in five years. I would say it goes in five years isn't a romance, then the switch really isn't a romance, and then one to watch isn't a romance. That's like the, the spread of romance that is in these the whatever I'm trying to say so we have a seven books on this list that I'm gonna rank so coming in number seven is you had me out a lot that one um, wasn't a fan I didn't like the characters didn't like the storyline didn't like the characters motives so I gave it two stars so that's number seven number six is boyfriend material by Alexis Hall this just wasn't for me I didn't like the characters their constant back and forth wasn't working for me, so um, I gave this three stars, but it's number six on this list. Then we have number five is Regretting You by Colleen Hoover. This, you could argue, is not a romance. There is a romance for both characters, though, and it's definitely not my favorite out of all of these. I really did enjoy the book. I think it gave it four and a half stars, but it just wasn't the best. The four on this list are all five star reads. So number four, I'm gonna say The Happy Ever After Playlist by Abby Jimenez. I really love this. I think I gave it four and a half stars, but then I rounded it up to five. I did really love this. Josh is adorable and it's a rock star romance and they meet and they like email and text each other and it was super cute. That's the number four. Number three is going to be Beach Read. I know, surprising, but Beach Read I really love. It's probably on my top 10 of the year, but I love the other two more. So Beach Read is number three. It was a great romance. I loved their writing and I loved their growth throughout it. This, people argue, is not a romance, but I think it definitely is romance heavy enough that I would count in the romance category. 
I know, you're being sad. I know. Mwah. Then number two, we have from Bud Nash by Jennifer Armentrout. This one, Fantasy Romance, died over it. So good. It doesn't end in an HEA. It's because it's a series. So you know they're going to end up at the end of the series together. They better. So I definitely consider this a romance. It's very romance heavy, and you know they really like each other. So it's basically, they're going to, it's basically an HEA fan, even though they're not actually like together together by the end, because there's another book. So number one is definitely um, Take a Hint, Danny Brown. My favorite. The Fear is just amazing. Danny's amazing. I love their fake dating. I love their romance. I love this book. It was perfection. I can't wait for the next book. I loved the book one. Talia Hibbert can do no wrong. She deserves to win. I'm hoping she wins. I don't think she will. I think Beatrice probably going to win because it has, I think, the most red out of all of these. But I'm praying people will grow some common sense and vote the best. And that is take a hint, Danny Brown. <laughs> Lily's getting angry because I have her ball. Okay, so this is my final list. I hope you guys enjoy. And yeah, that's all I have. I'm gonna leave this up a little longer because it probably took me a while to make this. But this is my list of best to worst and what I think of the Goodreads Choice Awards. I am pleasantly surprised that I've read eight out of 10 already and uh, they were all the actual romances and not the two that aren't romances that I had to read. As a reminder, I have my new pair of Ana Luisa earrings in. Make sure that you check out their website. They are the perfect gift to give your loved ones. I love them. I went to my parents' house and my mom actually commented on my earrings and she's like, ooh, I like your earrings, what are those? And I had to show her. Show them off. I really love them. They are so pretty. Darcy's scratching herself and shaking the camera. I'm going to wear my moon and star ones again tomorrow to show my mom because I'm going over again for dinner. So I love them. But that's all I have. Check out my link for Anna Lisa down below. Thank you so much for them for sponsoring this video. Let me know down below your thoughts on these top 10, what you choose to win, what your order of them is. I would love to know your full order. Let me know. But that's all I have. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day.